Brooklyn Independent Television. How this all began yes. was in uh, it? Yeah, January of uh, uh, 2007. Um, I won't go into why I began, but I wanted to write a noirish thriller. I'd been reading a lot of David Goodis, who wrote um, uh, Shoot the Piano Player, and I wanted to write something really fast-paced. And, and also, I was, known, I was known for fiction, and I was known for nonfiction. but I always say this, when I would write fiction, people would say, Come on, that's all true. Right, Why'd right, you call right, it right. a novel? Mm -hmm. Then when I would write nonfiction, they'd be like, did you make that up? <laughs> it was yeah. just like I couldn't win. So I was like, all right, I'm going to write a piece of fiction using my name and myself as a character. And I'd done that a little bit in the graphic novel that you were talking about, The Alcoholic, but I named the character Jonathan A. there. And Jonathan A could, a could stand for alone, alcoholic, Ames, um, asshole, alienated, alien, uh, American, no. Um, so, um, but this time I named the character Jonathan Ames. I made him a 40 something year old writer who was struggling, who in a moment of whimsy puts an ad on Craigslist because he's rereading Chandler and David Goodis, and he puts an ad on Craigslist advertising himself as a private detective. And so I wrote this short story, he gets a case, and our first episode very much mirrored that original short story. Up to the, the point. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun sitting here. I still think it's weird to pretend that you're a private detective. It's not pretending. Come on, you're always drawing superheroes. This is your chance to be one. All right, what has she paid us? Sorry, there's no money. I'm doing this one pro bono. I made out with her. Okay, so I wrote this short story. It was going to get published months later. And then I met an executive at uh, HBO, Sarah Condon. She liked the so short story. She was like, maybe we could develop this. She said, can you make some friends for the character? So I made some friends. I pitched it to HBO, and they immediately went for it, like 20 minutes later, called me and said, write a pilot. And um, so, but then the writer strike happened. In the interim, while I was waiting for the strike to end, I met Jason, because he was maybe going to get involved with this movie of one of my books right. called Wake Up, Sir. That I love. And then we started talking, and he said, what else are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I'm writing this detective show. And it turned out one of his favorite films of all time was Stolen Kisses by Truffaut, yeah. in which the young man becomes a private detective. And let me just butt in for a second, see, um, uh, the private detective was a, a, a character that I'd always wanted to play. And, mm -hmm. and literally 10 days before meeting Jonathan, um, I was talking to a friend saying that I felt a bit adrift and that I was looking for, for, for something and I couldn't connect anything and I was struggling to find a job that, you, A, to find a job and B, to find a job that I could relate to. And my friend said, well, if you could just, if it was a fantasy world, if you could just create your own thing, what would it be? I said, well, I guess I'd, you know, really what I'd like to do is play a private detective. And he started laughing. And I was like, why, why is that funny? He's like, no, I mean, just you as a private, I mean, how would that, how, and we've seen some <laughs> private detectives, how would that work? Like, how would it work? And I was like, I don't know, I mean, that's just what you're asking me. I just, I love Stolen Kisses, and I love The Long Goodbye, Elliot Gould. And uh, they just, like, they're, they're superheroes to me. And um, they're modern, and so anyway, so when he said that, I was like, Zhang, my favorite writer, and this character that I've always wanted to play, ah. But it was funny, because we were talking about this other incredible book and script that he'd written called right. Wake Up, Sir. Right. And all of a sudden, I felt like a kid on Christmas who like opens a present, and like, yeah. And then I look over, and like my sibling <laughs> opens something that I also want. Uh, and I was like, ah. Oh, and I didn't want to like say, like, can I have that, too? Maybe hey, uh, you did say, can I, can I do both? And I was just like, yeah. All right. Hi. Can I ask you a few questions? Who are you? My name is Jonathan Ames. I'm a private detective. You don't look like a cop. I'm a private cop. You a security guard? Why aren't you wearing your outfit? Private detectives don't wear outfits. I'd heard of Jonathan Ames, you know, as a kind of downtown guy performance voice, um, and then I did see part of the first pilot that you did. Right. And when I came to meet you that first time, that was all I had in my head, and then. I knew I loved the sort of the voice, but I wasn't seeing the world yet. And then the first thing I heard was that you were 
going to do it, and that was sort of rel revelatory. It started to define the world very fully. It was so fun. I was really nervous to meet you because uh, I'd seen Ma the, your Mad Men work, which was f superior, and when they said that you would do it, I just thought it was perfect because, to me, um, the more beautiful and noirish and uh, shadowy we could make it and, and um, gr grounded in the drama of it all, it would, it would make the funny things funnier and the insane things more insane. And uh, so when I heard that you were doing it, I just felt like, okay, well, now we have our little trio. Caroline, how are you? I'm good. I just wanted to check in. You're only a month away from your deadline. How's the work coming? Um, well, very, very good. The um, narrator is going through a lot of emotional pain and mental pain. Why? I thought it was a comedy about one man's failed journey through the Kama Sutra. My, my Brooklyn roots are that my father was born here, raised here. They grew up in Borough Park. Both my parents went to Brooklyn College, though my father transferred. And I came here as a child to see my grandparents. I grew up in New Jersey. And then your dad yeah. grew up in Borough Park. Down the street from your dad. Yeah, so we made this connection. And they're of the same generation. Yeah. My father's from Brooklyn. My mom's from Long Island. And, um, but I was born and raised in Southern California. Um, but I have dark hair, so people always think that I'm from New York, which is like the weirdest thing. I first moved to Brooklyn in 1995. I had a very cheap apartment in Brooklyn, 250 a month. Was right. that where they were shooting out the windows of your car, or was that somewhere else? I did get shot with a high-powered BB gun, which always takes away people's sympathy for me, because it's like, because I was parking this old beat-up car I had, and it was by the Navy Yard, and my bed would rock at night, because it was also by the BQE. George, what are you doing? Hey, uh, I'm just practicing this speech I have to give tomorrow in my mind. I need an audience. All of Manhattan? I love this city. And wrote this whole show in which Brooklyn is the locale. And as Alan said, we went on location to shoot the first episode. And, and I did feel like you, you had, um, as, you know, you had that Manhattanites <laughs> this is beautiful over here. I didn't know that there were these streets. To be honest, the neighborhood I was living in was probably one of the worst Manhattan neighborhoods because Soho had become a kind of generic tourist festival. But yeah, coming here and feeling the, the quiet. And also, you know, we started scouting mostly like Borum Hill and Carroll Gardens because that's where you're kind of based. Mm -hmm. We were sort of pulling towards Fort Greene all the time just by mm -hmm. chance, it seemed at first, and then more and more consciously. Anyway, why didn't you tell me? Because I thought she was bluffing. I didn't think she would actually move out. And then out of nowhere, these super efficient Israeli mover guys show up. All of a sudden, it's like the raid on Entebbe in my own apartment. Anyway, you think you can get her back? No, I don't think so. I feel like Suzanne started to think that I was a loser because I'm struggling to write. I mean, this second novel. Yeah, I, I listen. Just yesterday, Leah was like, why don't you go teach art in a public school? I'm not going to teach art at a public school. I don't wake up till 11 a.m. go teach art. But if you did teach, it would be steady income. Don't be disgusting. I had never really been here before, uh, I mean, I, longer than two weeks. I had always been in New York very, for, for work, but it was never to shoot, never to work here as an actor for press work, for prom promotion. Um, so I always felt very stressed out when I would come here because you have... Um, like seven days to see this, 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 and all the great <laughs> things that New York has to offer that you can't get in Los Angeles. And so my attitude towards New York was always that I loved it, but that I always felt very stressed out, and that any moment that I was not seeing something or absorbing something, I was wasting time. Mm -hmm. So coming early for the pilot to live here early, and now to be here working on the second season, it's so nice. Right. Okay, that's the place right there. Okay, I'll see you in an hour or 50 minutes. Ray, thank you for saving my life. I'll wait for you here by this tree. Okay, thank you, Boo Radley. I just find that um, if you have any type of insecurity or you're nervous <coughs> and you think you're going to do a bad job, um, the farther away you are from the thing you're about to do physically makes it all the more frightening. That's that's cool. So the closer you can get, just get to it, um, it just, I don't know, it makes it, I don't know. It's, it's like, like monsters in, in movies. If you don't see them, if they're, then they're scarier. It's scarier and the more yeah. you see it, the less scary. Yeah.
Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.